Hello everybody and welcome back to the West Coast. It's about time we did another episode on here, it's been a very long time due to me playing Gold Rush. It is a very addictive game. But so is this, so let's return to this for another episode. Now, um, yes as you can see I am really battling with this hill. Um, I would roll back and start again but I know it's not going to help because I was already going flat out when I was heading up the hill in the first place and it just ground to a halt because there is absolutely no traction. I'm guessing it's due to the lack of weight of the tractor, it can't be too heavy. I think it probably in real life it probably would be able to do that, I'm not too sure. Um, but who knows. So I think we're going to have to just abandon it here, which is a shame. So with some chocks behind the wheels we can now detach the trailer just here. Shouldn't roll away. And we're going to have to retrieve that when the snow has melted, because it looks like it's not going to be going anywhere until it does do. Unless of course we bring a bigger tractor over, but I don't really want to be doing that because it's just totally unnecessary. Um, it does take a long time to get to this farm, so yeah, I don't really want to be doing it. Hill Ridge is quite a long way from here, that is the blue farm. So, whoa, <laughs> there's me forgetting it's very slippery. How could I possibly forget? We are desperate for water. Or should I say, the sheep are desperate for water. In fact, if I don't give them any in the next probably five minutes, they're going to die. So we must be very fast at doing this. Now don't worry, there is not going to be any more work done in the winter after the first few minutes of this episode because we're going to start with the drilling as soon as it's warm enough. We are desperate to do it. Another thing we need to do which I mustn't forget about is the fertilising of the grass in the grass fields because we need to make that as productive as possible. I don't really want to be buying any more bales, it's very expensive and uh, if you can help it, it's, well, it's unnecessary really. At least they're watered means we don't have to worry about them dying, uh, except for the food. We do have plenty of bales stranded halfway up a hill. Oh yeah, <laughs> so uh, we may have to go and get some, although no, they seem to be fine. I think when you give um, an animal a bale, it will just give them the amount the bale is. So if it's 4,000 litres and they can only take a maximum of 2,000, it will st still take the 4,000, um, because there always seems to be a much longer delay between uh, when they require it if you give them a bale. Good, so with that done, all we have to do now is pop into our very nice warm farmhouse just here. We have a few, and we're going to rest until the morning. So, good night. <laughs> right, okay, um, oh, oh dear. Well, it is, uh, it's getting milder, obviously, but it's still very, very cold, as you would expect. It is the spring, this is early spring, so, um, Yes, we should probably prepare ourselves for doing the fertilising of the grass first. I think it's a bit too cold to get the drill out. I think you can probably still do it, it's just it won't germinate. Because the germination temperature is obviously much higher than minus one degree. Okay, there we go. We'll just put it here. I'll lower that down. I'm going to have to... Uh, pop over to the other farm. So I see you in, I suppose it would take about an hour to get there. Got to wait for another farm worker to actually bring our uh, transit down here. So uh, I'll see you when I see you. And here we are, quite a long time later. This is our Valtra tractor and it needs to have its row crop tyres. Um, I, uh, I think it does. Hang on, wait. Let me get this right. We need to go over to this field just around the corner first. If there isn't much grass growing, which I wouldn't have thought there would be, then we don't need to put row crop tyres on. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, it is, uh, yeah, totally covered. So uh, maybe today is a write off, possibly. Annoyingly, the next two days it's going to rain. I seem to get a lot of rain. Maybe I'm just very unlucky. Um, but yeah, yeah, fertilising is out of the question. But that doesn't mean we can't get it all set up. I'm not going to put any fertiliser in the spreader yet because you don't do that. It would start to corrode the spreader itself. Um, but it doesn't mean we can't put it on the tractor. I think it's been a very, very cold winter here over on the west coast. So that was unfortunate. We've had lots of snow. In fact, off screen there's been a day or two of snow. There we go. Lift it up. And you know what? I think it's just going to be a day of working in the workshop. So chances are we're going to be skipping forwards another day in a second just so we can actually get something done. So I'm going to posh about here. I think we'll probably service the drill. So I'll see you when uh, things are
things have warmed up a bit. How's this looking? Any better? Yep, much better. Still quite a bit of snow laying around on the ground in the yard. And also you can see the hills on the horizon there. There is uh, still quite a bit of snow up there, but that's higher up, higher altitude. So you would expect it to hang around a bit longer. But I think it is now warm enough to spread some fertiliser. So what we're going to do is use... Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pick up a bag of fertiliser and we're going to uh, we're going to spread it. But let me just get rid of the snow first. Okay, that's better. So, uh, yeah, let's just go for a bag at the back. I did say that the seed bags were okay in front just because we're going to use the seed first, but then I actually forgot about the, uh, the grass. We need to fertilise the grass before we fertilise the arable crops. So I think just one is in the way, actually, so it should be pretty easy to do this. Go. And if we can grab one, I don't really think it's going to be more than one. Although I haven't actually checked to see what the capacity is of one of these things. That seed bag may be in the way. We don't want to be bursting them. Okay. So let me just pull forwards because this is a bit too close to the barn. We'll give ourselves a bit of space to work in. Fantastic. Load it up. Now, I've never used these bags properly before. In fact, I've never loaded anything um, from the bags into a fertilizer spreader or a seeder. So I don't know if it's just going to happen automatically or if you have to press a button to activate it. You just basically hover over it and it seems to work. So that's good. Let's go for a next one. Um, I suppose we should keep working into the back there. There is just about enough space. It's very, very tight. There's a bit of bag pushing going on. I can't really see. Too far over. Is it going to be two bags then? I suppose it would be. With the fertilizer in the snow looking the same color, it looks like I've spilt fertilizer everywhere. But I can assure you I haven't. Can go on the left hand side. It's taken all of that, so I suppose it's going to be three bags then, or maybe two and a half. Let's go for this one here. The seed and the fertilizer really should be in a separate barn anyway, so next time it will be. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think I caught the potato box. See how much we can get out of here. I don't think it'll take the full load, but I've been wrong before. Is that... Um, I don't know if it took it all or if it just emptied the rest anyway. Oh, it's certainly 74% full. Wow, so it actually takes four bag loads. Surprising. Expensive. Very expensive. Maybe I should just adjust the prices of each bag does seem to be a bit pricey. We're done. Okay, I did the last one off screen, just didn't think it was really necessary to show. Uh, so let me just park up. Out there. Let's go and do some fertilizer spreading on the grass. So I've left it up. I probably should have lowered it down actually when loading it up. It would have made life much easier. But this is the field we're going to start with. I really don't know how long each um, fertilizer spreader load is going to last. You'd hope it'd be quite some time. It's got quite a wide working width as well, so that really does help us. The best thing would be if we could just use our own natural produce, slurry or manure. But we don't actually have any, since we only have sheep. Many people keep saying just get cows, but the problem with cows is they are very expensive to buy in the first place, and I don't really have so much money um, to get them, because we're still reserving money for a telehandler and for a sprayer, self-propelled sprayer. So uh, it would be, I would say, unwise at this stage to get cows. The good thing is we're kind of leaving a mark, so you can see where we've been. This is going to be very useful when it comes to going up and down the field again afterwards. 
we won't be overlapping too much because obviously an overlap is a waste and yeah look, judging by the uh, the speed it's going down we're going to have plenty here so that's very good news if it had just rapidly emptied then this would have been an extremely expensive operation and you would have probably thought it's not even worth it I suppose we're going to have to go a bit of an angle here as well just to ensure we don't miss anything I'm not really too worried if we do miss something because as long as we cover most of it we'll be fine it's not like it's a pesticide or a herbicide it's just to help the productivity ok there's going to be a bit of overlap here but I would say that is going to be everything when we get back to the top so we'll move over to our next field which is possibly field number 31 or field number 80 I forget the numbers, they, they get mixed around the numbers are correct but the, uh, the fields themselves I'm not too sure where each one is 81 is this one down here which is the sheep farm, river rock farm field 30 is the one at mountain view farm and did we purchase any more? I'm not too sure no, we didn't buy any more grass fields I don't think so yeah, we'll just go over to uh, those two press V I don't know if that will have actually fertilised as we know there is um, this, uh, this tendency with a field which doesn't have a number not to actually recognise fertiliser but hopefully it has done I know that the other two will work 31 and 80 will definitely accept the fertiliser and uh, this field in front of us actually that needs to have some fertiliser too we could come back to that later if we have anything left over I do prefer to do the arable crops with a sprayer mainly because it's faster but we do need to get a self-propelled sprayer first and they're not exactly cheap there was one in the mod contest, in fact there was two I've used the challenger one, there was another one as well um, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not really, I've never tried it so I don't know if it's any good it could be fantastic but it could also be not very good there is obviously the new sprayer going to be in the Platinum Edition so we could just hold off and get that one, the Stara Imperador 3.0 I think it's called um, so yeah we could use that but it just depends on the price again because if it's really expensive then we can either lease it which I really do not want to do or we could just spend loads of money and then struggle our way through the rest of the save game which would not be a good idea because it would just make everything very dull. The snowy mountains. Well, it's only three degrees still, so you would expect there to be quite a bit of snow left on the hills. The ground temperature is uh, still at zero, so it's still at freezing point on the ground. And I think really that is too cold for us to plant stuff, even though we could do, which wouldn't have the germination. I don't want to. I don't think it would be the right thing to do. So the other field is in here. I'm hoping in the next episode we can start to plant things and I'm desperate to do it because we're going to be using the Challenger with our brand new seed drill. So it's not like I'm just trying to put it off for the sake of it. I really do want to be doing it. Uh, it's just I'm trying to stick to what you, well roughly what you do in real life. I think if it was zero degrees, the ground temperature, you're not going to think, oh let's go and plant a load of wheat. It wouldn't be a very sensible idea. Unless you were desperate. Yeah, this is definitely working. At least we can safely say that the uh, these two fields are not going to be wasted. The fertiliser is going to be put to good use. But I always find it's worth doing even if you don't know if it's going to work. Because you never know, it could do. The working width is very decent. I couldn't complain about it really. But if you're doing a very large arable field then it's going to take some time. After this we'll go down to the sheep farm and we'll finish off the grass fertilising and then we can move on to a different job. Whether it's setting up the seed drill or something else I'm not too sure but we'll certainly not be ending after this because we've barely started today. We started off with wheel slippage over on that hill. Um, and then yeah we've, we've had to skip a number of days just because of all the snow lying around it is annoying it's a shame that the snow wasn't sort of at the beginning of the winter and then it was milder at the end we could have uh, got going a bit sooner with the drilling but 
just the way it is. So we'll have four full days basically, minus the raining day, <laughs> which is tomorrow. So possibly three full days to do the drilling, which should be perfect. Uh, we've already done one field, so there's only about five to, to go, maybe six. How many are there? We've done ten, so there's five, fifteen. I suppose one could be a grass field. I haven't checked. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So not too bad, really. The hedges are still fairly wintry, not really too much growth on them. There is a bit, you can see a few buds, um, but it's still fairly sticky, lots of sticks. Um, yeah, they're just coming out of dormancy. Oh wow, the barriers have just gone down in front of me. I have to wait for the EWS freight train. That is just so realistic. love it. Right. You see, it's just things like that which just add so much to a map. It can be maybe insignificant to some people, but I should think to a lot of people, that is like the icing on the cake. Really, really good. Um, because I suppose you could just have like a static train in the station, but without the moving barriers and the moving train itself, it just, it would lack animation. The entire map would be lacking something. And that completes it. So things like that which just make such a good map. And I think, to be honest, that is probably the first time I've seen the train moving. Yes, that can be moved now. Since it's not too slippery. It just shows what seasons adds though. When you have layer upon layer of snow, it just basically turns to ice and it's just, well, look, thick ice um, so yeah it, it does make a huge difference oh look our wool pallet may be full we can sell that in the next day or two let's get this done first yep so this is working it's good to see I would buy some more grassland, but I don't know if we actually need it. It might be just buying something for the sake of it. Because really, two fields, although I don't really like this field, um, would produce enough grass for our sheep. We only have 20 sheep. The reason why I don't like this field is because of how, uh, well, how, how tilted it is. It's on such a gradient that uh, it, it makes it quite hard to do the baling and all the other work. But you mustn't complain, I suppose, because it's the land which you need land which is required to keep the sheep alive and productive. Another very quick job there. So we'll finish off. Uh, before we leave we'll check and make sure the uh, sheep don't require anything. Because if they do then we might as well give them some. We'll give them some water or some hay or something. Uh, we're reversing randomly. Perfect. Everything is very good. They seem to be self-cleaning which is interesting. Because they're Cleanliness was on 30% before, and it's now on, uh, was it 93? So somebody is clean it. Maybe the sheep have turned up and eaten their own mess. That would be interesting. The pallet I do want to sell, but we'll wait for a great demand, and also we don't have the tractor in the front load here anyway, so it would be kind of pointless um, trying to move it with uh, something we don't have here. We could push it with this to the sell point, but that would be a bit weird. Anyway, let's go back over to the main yard and we need to set up the cedar, the seed drill. So we've got this field here, which um, I, I don't know if it needs doing yet, or if we should just wait until it warms up a bit. Um, but the progression of the growth has actually turned out to be pretty good. Here it is. Uh, it's kind of between two different stages at the moment. I think it's because we did do the headland first so that the, uh, the worker could work it out. So that's sort of grown first, which doesn't look the best, but I'm sure it'll all end up okay. Yeah, so that is going to have to be done. We'll put that on tomorrow's schedule, because we need to really get this seed drill set up. The Challenger, I think, is in the shed just over there. Roll that down. So, yeah, tomorrow we'll do two different things. Why? Oh, that must have happened when I was doing the... Oh, it's too heavy. Let's do the snow clearance. 
Very nice challenger we have here. Obviously the first time we've used it. Maybe we can push it back with the challenger. I really don't know how it's ended up here. Come on, roll with us. Roll. That's it. You can do it. Yes. It's just been knocked out of place, really. Stay there. Stay there. That will do. Okay, so here is our drill. Lemkin Solitaire. I think we're very lucky, actually, to be able to afford such a huge machine at this stage. I think we all know it's because of the gold nugget hunting, but without it, we would have been struggling. This needs to be filled up. I don't know if you can actually open up the hopper and animate filling it up, or if we just have to do it by sort of putting the bag near it. That would not look as good, but I suppose it's the only way of doing it. Just see. Oh no, you can do it. Fantastic. So, it doesn't leave us with much space, but we should be able to just about squeeze past there. And I also don't know how many bag loads it's going to require. Don't burst the bag first. That would be counterproductive. Okay. Oh, a bit higher. Yeah, it's filling fairly quickly. Looks like it might be another three or four bags though. But as mentioned before, if you have a full load, a full hopper, it's going to last a very long time. So we may only have to fill this thing up once. Just depends on the consumption rate. And realistically, the canola you should barely need any seed at all. It's two. We'll be ready to go next time. In fact, we only have two bags left. Yeah, we only bought four. It's a good job we did get four. The world's a bit of a funny angle as well. Makes it a bit tricky. And we might as well put the last one in there too. Actually looking at it, we may actually need quite a bit more. Um, but yeah, we'll just go with what we've got. This one's tipped over. That's annoying. That really should just swing down with the gravity. <laughs> But it wants to just sit there at an angle, which is a bit unfortunate. Right. So I just tried to get it upright, and it fell off again. So hopefully this time, it's going to work. We'll be able to just load it straight in. The trailer wants to have the seed. It took the cover off. Well, you're not having it, trailer. This is for the seed drill. There we go. Right, four seed bags in there. It would be nice if they were a bit higher capacity because that is only 55% full. And I should think two uh, or maybe three would have filled that. There might be an update. I know they did update it to implement the pig food bags, which actually does sound very good. Um, but I don't know if it was anything to do with changing the capacity or the price of each bag. They do need to be changed, so I'm not too sure. Anyway, we can now close the cover and fold this up again. And we're ready to go in the next day. We will be actually continuing on this day just because of it being sunny. So we're going to be, for the first time ever actually in this series, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the same in-game day. Anyway, yep, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And we will be continuing with Farming Simulator tomorrow. Um, failing that, it will be Sunday. But yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll be, uh, we'll be back to FS tomorrow. So see you then. Bye for now.